Over these weeks that we celebrate this great feast of Easter, we get a glimpse into the life of the early church and how the apostles responded to that resurrection. And it's always surprised me, always in many ways caught my attention, how these disciples really were able to carry on the task of spreading the gospel through the whole world, given their limitations. After all, they were fishermen, not well educated. And many times there were people who seemed to be very dull and not be able to, as they say, pick things up on the first bounce. And yet we have this text in the Acts of the Apostle of Philip. Philip goes on his own to Samaria. And nobody tells him how to do it or what to do. He just goes. He takes an initiative. That seems to me to be a, an, ish, an important quality of leadership. Be able to see an opportunity and take an initiative as he does. And then he preaches. There is no indication whatsoever in the Gospels that Peter knew how to preach or stand before a crowd and address him in a public way. In fact, we heard earlier in one of the texts how Philip was criticized by the Lord who asked to see the Father and Jesus says, if you see me, you see the Father. How long, Philip, have I been with you and yet you do not know me? And yet, he seems to be self-taught. He takes the initiative to be able to learn how to stand before a crowd and speak and proclaim the gospel. And the last thing we see here in terms of a leadership trait that he and the other disciples reveal is that they did their leadership in a way that brought people together as we hear these Samaritans all listening in, in one accord to what he had to say. As I reflect on my own life and see the need to develop those qualities of leadership, it's on this Mother's Day that it really dawns on me that many of those lessons of leadership were taught by my mother. She was one who always made sure that we took initiative in life, as she did. Every day after school, my two brothers, they were older than I, and I would join my father as we were helping him to clean the school as he was a part-time janitor in the school after he worked at the post office. One day he injured his foot very badly, and so my mother said to the three of us, now it's up to you to get the school cleaned every day so that dad can keep that job and we don't want to disappoint Monsignor. So for three weeks, the three of us took up the task, took the initiative of cleaning up the school, of uh, being the janitors for, for that school. And it taught me a lesson of making sure that whenever there is an opportunity or a need to take an initiative. The second thing my mother also taught us was that learning had to be lifelong. She had a high school education, and yet she had a great vocabulary and great knowledge. And one of the things that always kept her sharp and fresh was working after we all went to bed, the crossword puzzles in the paper. She liked to do those and was very gifted at being able to do it. She was also one who made sure that she would be an individual who had uh, uh, enough information in order to take up whatever task that was there. And that has always instilled in me as well a need for lifelong learning. And finally, like, <clears throat> like we see with Philip, my mother was one who exercised leadership in a way that, <clears throat> that brought people together. Everything that she did on a day-to-day -day basis, from washing the clothes to preparing meals, shopping for food, sewing on buttons, it was all not about her, but it was about how the whole family could be enriched, how we would stay together as a family, and how we would be able to have a life together. Good leadership does that. It aims at bringing people together, something that we need to keep in mind as we inaugurate new leaders here in the city uh, this, this coming week. It's an opportunity for all of us to cultivate that kind of leadership that brings unity as the most important uh, object of 
of our of the of the tasks that we do when providing leadership in wor in the world. And so today, as we celebrate Mother's Day, it's an opportunity for us to think about all the lessons that we have learned in life through our mothers. And as I think about these apostles, Philip and Peter, uh, James and John, all of those that we hear about in these readings, it occurs to me that they were able to do what they, were, they did to spread the gospel, to launch the spreading of uh, the word of God throughout the whole world to the point where the faith is spread today uh, in the world. They were able to do that most likely because they had good mothers like my own. 